The lands of the Stockbridge have always been the beloved homelands of the Mohican people. However, our original territory extended much further, from Lake Champlain and the entire Hudson River to Manhattan, and to the west here in the Berkshires, along the Housatonic River extending to the Westfield River. Today's Stockbridge, by its current boundaries, was formed in the 1730s and first called Indian Town. The stated purpose of Indian Town was to be a Christianized settlement, an experiment in assimilation and joint governance. This experiment lasted only 50 years before the tribe was systematically dispossessed of our lands and forced west. Today, against all odds, our people continue as a federally recognized Indian nation called the Stockbridge Muncie Community, now based on a reservation in Wisconsin. The reservation is about the same size as the original 23,000 acres of Indian Town. There are roughly 1,500 enrolled members. When you walk in Stockbridge today, the remarkable history and contributions of our Mohican ancestors are not visible. Our homes have not been preserved. There are no monuments to our warriors or our diplomats. As a small effort to honor our ancestors and combat Mohican erasure from Stockbridge, seven of our tribal members return to the homelands. They will be your guide on this Stockbridge Main Street walking tour and interpret 11 sites important to our cultural heritage. We hope that you gain an appreciation of Mohican Nation past and present as you walk in the footprints of our ancestors. Please visit Mohican.com for more information. Onuri. Here at the town offices, look above the entrance doors and note the bust honoring Mohican Sachem Kunkapot. This land is the original plowing lands of a Mohican ancestor named Aaron Sasalkok, who was forced to sell it in 1773 as he entered the Revolutionary War. The clerk's office inside contains many records vital to Stockbridge Mohican history, which have remained there since they were filed in the 1700s. They show numerous facets of the tribe's participation in the local government and our diplomatic abilities. My name is Robert Little. Uh, my real Indian name is Nakana Kapwe, and I'm also a commander of the Mohegan Veterans Organization, and have been for the past 22 years. It's very humbling to come back here again. Yeah, this is my second trip back here to our homelands, Indian town. We didn't have no say after we left. We were forced out. But to see the manuscripts and the, the names of our ancestors is a very, very it touches my heart. Just beyond Laurel Hill, behind the town offices, on a bend in the Housatonic, lies the home of our ancestor, King Solomon. His home site was the location of a 1783 ox roast, sponsored by George Washington to thank our tribe for service in the Revolutionary War. This praise was short-lived because that same summer the remaining tribal members were dispossessed of lands and forced to leave the town that was founded for them. The community was forced to uproot and move west among the Oneida in western New York. We went to the King Solomon site to look at the repatriation artifacts that were recovered there. So this is a this is a lead ball. This is a, a musket ball. We uh, I just we just recovered this this morning. So this mm -hmm. is just a, about an hour ago. <laughs> Upon crossing the bridge, I saw that this was the place that I had come in 2006. There on the water is a rather large flat rock. And when I was there in that 2006 trip, I looked off of that bridge at that rock 
and I could feel my ancestors there fishing from that rock. It was later, while we were on this same trip to see the artifact that was recovered, that I was informed that the location was the site of the home of King Solomon, who was a direct ancestor of mine. That there's still something left that would indicate either the Octros event or something more broadly associated with Solomon living here. And that just really brought to heart the feeling that I had had 13 years earlier when I looked down and saw that rock and felt my ancestors there fishing. It's, and that's just based on the diameter. Uh, to see the research, it's more humbling because I remember our ancestors, have they've walked these, uh, the same road out here. I was laid down tobacco at the burial grounds and say a prayer for them because so, I know that their patriotism and how it, uh, well, I respect our ancestors that way. This is part of the property of Chief John Kunkapot, a highly regarded community leader. He had the largest plot of land on Main Street, which speaks to his status. He was a major leader at critical moments. He signed the earliest known land deeds in the Berkshires in 1724 and was a decision maker in the 1734 meeting of Sachems to decide to accept Christianity and decide to move to Indian Town, which later became Stockbridge. Chief John Kunkapod is believed to have been born in 1690 and his original name Pafnihanawa. He was a captain in the King George's War and led 18 Stockbridge Mohicans. Kunkapod exemplifies a Mohican quality of diplomacy. The tribe has long been known as peacemakers. As early as the 1600s, the tribe helped negotiate land treaties in the Hudson Valley and helped keep peace between tribes during war times. Today, this tradition still plays a key role within the tribe. Kolomansi, Nidishinzi, Kishok, Wipokwa, Ninon GIE, Mohiganu. My name is Joanne Gardner Shedler. I am a past uh, tribal council member. About three terms I served on our tribal council. I'm a past vice commander of our Mohegan veterans. I'm actually one of three of our women who retired from the Army who started our Mohegan Veterans about 20 years ago. My Muncie name is the rising mist in a ray of sunshine woman. And I said I'm coming, I came from Mohicanu, which is actually where I'm at now. This is a place of the waters that are never still, which is where our ancestors came from. I'm just honored to be here in front of the one of the properties that my ancestor had during the time of being here in the mission time in Stockbridge. My grandmother is, is uh, Lida Kankapot. The Kankapot family uh, still is names their children. My grandson is Kankapot also. I know other of my cousins have named their children and grandchildren Kankapot. I think of many of the different things that happened and what happened to our tribe. I think of the leadership there had to be for us to stay together. I think of the wisdom of our ancestors for them to really discuss what to do and really work hard at staying together. I think of the patriotism there was when our warriors decided to go ahead and fight for our nation, which ended up being the United States. and. It was important to me because I'm a retired Army nurse. And when I went off and got called to active duty, I thought of my ancestor and that we have a long history throughout our tribe of our tribal members. 
going into active service. And then I think about the peacemakers. I think about the sacrifices that our people made and how their sacrifice throughout all this time brought us to Wisconsin, kept us together, and I, I'm very honored and privileged to be standing here today. The Stockbridge Library is on the original home site of Johannes Mudawampi, also called Great Hannes, who passed it down to his wife Hannah Mudawampi and Elizabeth Sadasquath. Today, Stockbridge Library's archive contains important original documents stretching back to the Indian Town era. One example is an original version of the June 1750 proprietorship document that lists the land allotments for each Mohican male proprietor, 42 in all. This was a critical moment when land ownership first changed from being communal to individual and thus more easily taken. The museum also displays gifts from the Stockbridge Muncie community today, given on visits here to our homelands. The plot plan of the town. Oh, wow. It's actually three pieces. I've only ever seen the copy of this. Yeah. But this is this we is the original. This is the original. You've got your signatures down here. Let's turn it around. There. Oh my gosh. And look at the names. This is a lot of what we used to be able to do the research for our Main Street walking tour. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so like here, so this is my ancestor David on an Ikanuk. So it'd be today's mm -hmm. half of the cemetery. Okay. So this was 1739, and then this one, I mean, this is just- That's 1750. 1750 proprietorship document. Right. That's always really powerful to see. Yes. In person, because this is just the whole, it's the document that tells the story the most of the dispossession here and um, how we went from you know, something like this, or from the uh, Not a Hook or Great Meadow, where everybody lived communally. Mm -hmm. So then this was the moment when everybody was forced. A lot of the people that are on this map are then forced to sign, you know, to agree to this of how many right. set number of acres they have instead of the land being held together for the whole community. Yeah, it just it blows me away to know that these exist at all and that they're just still right here you know right where they were the meetings took place you know just down the street at right today's the chime tower where the meeting house was and where they were signed and i mean they've just stayed right here everyone you know in our tribe as i'm sure you've seen over the years you know people coming out and just to have that direct connection because they're so yes. far removed from our original homelands and we have you know, a thriving community and, you know, a lot of other things to be proud of in our homelands today in Wisconsin, but for our original homelands, this is something, Stockbridge in particular, connects all of us. You are looking at the former farm of Jacob Nenauftonk, a community leader and celebrated veteran of the French and Indian Wars. He became a principal hero during the French and Indian Wars, forming an all Mohican company of Rogers Rangers, which would scout and scour the woods. The partnership with Rogers Rangers soon became a popular guerrilla force, creating the basis for characters later romanticized by James Fenimore Cooper. One of Captain Anoftonk's many battles was at Fort Ticonderoga. Because of the involvement of 98 Mohicans in the French and Indian Wars, Abenaki and Scatacook raiders avoided English settlements along the Housatonic. Rather than receiving gratitude, our ancestors found themselves increasingly unwelcome in New England. I 
very proud to be a, an ancestor and to think of uh, two companies of 98 Mohegan Warriors fought and served with Rogers Rangers. I feel I've followed in our ancestors' footsteps by being a Vietnam combat veteran myself in the United States Marine Corps. I've been a commander of Mohegan veterans for the past 22 years. And most of the Mohegan veteran members, the majority, are relatives of our ancestors. And we fought in all the American wars, actually 16 wars to the present. Mohegan veterans' Indian name is Wapanaki Wapas Chesak, which means Eastern Tribe Soldiers. Okay. It was documented by Captain Hendrik Appelmont, which actually wrote in his writings of Wapanaki Wapas Chesak. Nishik. The Stockbridge Muncie community continues to have a strong record of military valor. Members of the tribe have served in pre-colonial wars and every American war from the Revolutionary War to the present day. It has been reported that meetings were held at Red Lion Inn during the Revolutionary War including Mohicans serving in the war. This land was originally owned by Moshenamok and then by a Mohican woman, Rhoda Kuaponas, likely his daughter. Though up until the Stockbridge era, Mohican people were matrilineal and served as sachems, these cultural practices changed under the English methods in Stockbridge and Mohican women were no longer able to serve in leadership positions. Today, the Stockbridge Muncie community again has women at all levels of leadership, including as tribal council president and tribal treasurer. Kolomasi, my name is Terry K. Terrio, and I am the tribal treasurer for Stockbridge Muncie Band of Mohegans, which is one of the officers of the tribal council. Kulamase Nidushin Ziodas Arse, and I am the 2018 Junior Miss Mohicanu. My role is to lead and help serve volunteer work in our community. We've stepped up to the leadership roles, but I don't think we've ever, ever been out of the background. And it's important for us to teach our young girls coming up, like my niece Odessa, RC the value of being strong, a strong future leader. As I dance at the powwows, a lot of powwows, I was once talking to a respected gentleman and I asked him why the woman stood at the left and the man stood at the right for the lead dancers at the powwow and he said that it was because the women are more conscious and they're more connected to the earth and the men want to protect them. And I see with leaders in my tribe, the men always respect the woman and they give them the right to use their conscious, conscious to show younger people and lead and show what they know about how to live life. And you should. You are standing at the home of Jonas Itawakum, a son of Umpachani. In 1734, as a boy, he traveled to Yale to assist Reverend Sergeant with learning Mohican, along with Kunkapat's son, Robert. Jonas was a noted scout during the French and Indian Wars, serving the Nauftonks Company at Ticonderoga. He is also recorded as leading hunting parties to feed the community. However, like nearly every Stockbridge Indian by the 1760s, he was sued for debt. Town office documents show he was jailed in Albany in 1763 and his house later burnt down. This is an example of the type of pressures our ancestors faced in Stockbridge that ultimately led to being forced to move from the area. I get questions from nieces and nephews and cousins and relatives is how did we lose, why did we lose our land, our homeland? 
course, we tell them the history, but it went on for as long as we traveled. They lost it to debt, to taxes, to illness. They had to sell the property. And this went on up until the late 1950s, where we currently are at Red Springs. Everywhere we traveled, this has happened. We've lost land. My story is my grandmother, Laura Gardner Mohawk, had a 40-acre lot in Red, town of Red Springs in Wisconsin. And she was a widow, and she got too old to do her house cleaning jobs in town for the ladies, and lost her property to grocery bill. So that's how I explain it to our young folks. We currently have over uh, in Wisconsin over 25,000 acres that we have bought a majority of the lake acreage for our people. We are aware of our history and very protective of our homelands. When I come here, that's the way I feel. I feel a real spirituality about being here. So I always look forward to coming here. This is the site of the home of a Mohican leader named Upanchani. You may recognize his name from nearby sites and local pronunciation, Umpachini Falls and Umpachini River. Umpachini likely resided in a wigwam. The town was at first comprised of Mohican-style wigwams and English-style houses side by side, with Main Street visible but cows using it as a pasture. Umpachani was often called upon to speak for the tribe due to his eloquence. He was known to have questioned the colonial rule and Christianization, feeling free in openly critiquing English colonists like Ephraim Williams and Reverend Sargent himself. Hello, I'm Jeff Vili. I'm the voice behind the camera. I feel that one of the most redeeming qualities of the Mohican people is our ability to adapt. We have had to adapt in a changing world and adapt to survive. Many people did not survive, but I stand before you today, a proud Mohican man that is a survivor. And speaking to adaptation, I was a carpenter. It was what I was, my father trained me to do. He was a carpenter. And in the winter of 1999, I had uh, a single son. I was a single father with a young son, and work had slowed to a stop. I went to the tribal department to ask them for a temporary job to get me through the winter. They sent me down to the newspaper. When I got there, the editor asked me, can you write? I told him yes. He said, go do this story. While I was gone doing the story, he left. I came back, I asked him to help. I did not receive that help. February of 2020 will be 20 years that I have been doing that newspaper. So yes, I believe I can do it again. And I believe this lends itself to the power of our people to persevere and continue Beyond my ability to make a short story long, our people have been orators like Umpachini. And even though we were assimilated into the culture of the dominant society long before any other tribes were, we have survived. And we are surviving yet today. This 1741 house is the home of John Sargent's family, the original missionary to our tribe. The mission house is the last remaining structure in Stockbridge, open to the public, where John Sargent, Umpachani, Matoxin, Kunkapat, 
and other tribal members gathered, spoke, and learned from one another and is a significant part of the origin of Stockbridge as Indian town. I'm honored to be here today because I know our ancestors accepted Christianity in a way to survive. And so here in the Mission House is where many of them met, and uh, it's hard to imagine being here and what they gave up in order to survive for us today. It's a, a spiritual feeling, I mean, not in a religious way, but in a way of knowing our ancestors walked here, came into this building. We're living on this land as we were trying to figure out how can we keep together. And I'm really thankful for them that they did that because otherwise we would not be here today. So this is like my fourth or fifth trip back here. And each time I come back, I'm learning more. And I'm so happy to talk to the people here in the town to help us understand and learn more about our people. Kolomalsi, my name is Diane Burr. I live in the Stockbridge Muncie community in Wisconsin on Ottawak, which is the place of deer. I am an educator. I work with children ages zero through 17. To your west of this building is the very first schoolhouse in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. The role of education has always been vital to our people since the very beginning in 1750 and still today. Electa Quinney was the very first school teacher in Wisconsin in 1828. And I think that is what has kept our people strong since the beginning is their connection to education. Mohican tribal member Nananikanuk's property is on the eastern half of what is now the town cemetery. Please walk over to the southwest corner of the cemetery to view a memorial to Chief Kunkapat, as well as two Stockbridge Indian women, Roxy Seabuck and Sarah Tausi, the widow of a Revolutionary War veteran. The Stockbridge Muncie community worked to ensure grave markers for the women were put in place and tribal members continue to come to the site to pay respects. The cemetery also contains the grave of Reverend Sergeant and his wife. Kona Mansi, my name is Bonnie Hartley. My name in our language is Tahekwindohat. I mean, she has her arms around the people. And I'm a direct descendant of David Nananikanuk, whose lands I'm standing on. It's really significant for me to, um, to know that this was the lands of my direct ancestor to think about him, to feel his presence, to think about our other relatives, his family here, his children, um, to know about the other relatives across Main Street, and to think about the kind of lives that they had that led to us still being here today and all the sacrifices that, that they've made along the way. In the corner of the cemetery too, it's significant to have our location of the headstones that our tribe worked on because it's an example of how our tribe continues to return to Stockbridge continues to return to our homelands in general all throughout the Hudson Valley and Housatonic River Valley. And uh, the work that I'm honored to do for our tribe is in historic preservation. And that's the program of our tribe that we continue to return back to our homelands and consult under state and federal laws and try to protect our ancestors' sacred burial grounds and village sites and other cultural sites all throughout our territory. So we do our best to try to protect sites from being disturbed from different construction projects. And in the case like the, the markers here, whenever possible to honor you know, and mark our significant places. I 
I have the honor in working for historic preservation for our tribe to be living out east. I frequently like to come here on my own and talk to David Nananikanuk and just spend time with him knowing that it's a very direct connection and I still feel their presence and I personally you know, feel that their spirits are still here and that they're still looking out for my family and for our tribe today. This is the site of the former Stockbridge Meeting House, which served as both the church and town hall. At first, our Mohican ancestors served on town leadership in the English style, such as being elected to the board of selectmen. However, many of the English residents served to dispossess our ancestors of their leadership roles. Here's one example from local documentation. In March of 1763, Englishman Elijah Brown, with no official authority, notified a Mohican constable that a town meeting would be held the next day. The residents had been notified 11 days earlier. Most of the tribe were working in their maple sugar houses several miles away. Elijah Williams was elected as a selectman and none of the Mohican candidates were allowed to be heard. Our ancestors walked out of the meeting house and refused to serve in the town offices. Mohicans and white supporters later tried to call a second meeting but the selectmen chosen in the first meeting refused to be overturned. Mohicans appealed to the general court in Boston, but the case was dismissed. So here we are back, coming back to that place where we lost our, our homeland and our say in something as a separate nation still together because of our ancestors who persisted and continued on to do that. And today we're back more, I think, to our traditions like, like we were before where the women had say, there were council people, our leaders, and we have a woman leader here today with us. And we have a president, women, woman that's president right. of our tribe. That's right. So, so that's really uh, nice that we're more equal and, and we can learn our traditions and come back to our language, and, which is awesome. I'm really proud of that. Part of our ancestors. It is ironic though that the the same methods that were used in the 1700s to dispossess our people of lands were used in the 1800s to dispossess our people of lands in the Red Springs area in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I think about in the example that was given how much our tribe was aware of what was going on and fighting it and, you know, involved in the court cases and issuing petitions and things and so early on, you know, having to litigate, I guess, and how much that then led to people like Oppamut and others that went on to be, you know, diplomats and attorneys that we've always been trying to use that system to keep getting, you know, rights. Right, right. And that we had those peacemakers back then, which today we still have in our tribal courts. I know Jeff, Jeff was, a was a peacemaker, I was a peacemaker. Um, and so we still are using those types of traditions today to sustain us and keep us together, which is important. And we're learning our language. Our language is coming back. Our cultural components of sewing. Odessa sewed her own skirt. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy our young people are here and um, because they need to learn our history and to keep going forward when we're no longer here. Like to keep everyone together, going together right? The Burying Ground Monument was dedicated in 1879 to mark the burial grounds all around you. It is believed that it was already a burial area of our ancestors long before the Starkbridge era. Our tribal member Jeremiah Slingerland came out from Wisconsin to speak at the dedication of this monument.
Look past the burial ground to the Stockbridge Golf Course, referred to as Winatacook, or the Great Meadow. There are 32 meadow lots for our tribe there, considered the most desirable land, ranging from two to 10 acres. It was already cleared to some extent and offered a fresh supply of fish from the river and land to raise corn. Hendrik Oppelmutt, a noted Mohican attorney and diplomat, wrote a 1785 land deed for what is now the golf course, and he was part of an 1809 burying ground deed an effort where Mohicans, after we were already forced out of Stockbridge, returned to preserve this burial site from being destroyed in a road project. Oppelmott is buried in a cemetery in Kokona, Wisconsin. He is a link in one lifetime to the many trails our tribe has endured. So when each time I visit the burial grounds of our ancestors, very honored and humbled, you know, because I know that they fought and for bravery, for our freedom throughout American history. And that's why each time I come here, the burial grounds, I put tobacco down, you know, a way of honoring them for their bravery that they fought for us in Ishek. I believe that it's crucial to come back and set foot on these lands where my ancestors set foot on because it gives you a sense of where you came from and what your people have been through. And it helps you grow into the person that you are knowing your history. Also, from being separated, it's really meaningful to come back and see exactly where we were because it helps keep everyone together. And thank you, Rick Wilcox, for um, generations of your family and our families, you know, for preserving and taking care of these burial grounds. Okay, usually at our uh, annual Wigan Veterans Powwow, we honor our uh, members with a medallion. So at this time, this is Route East, I'm going to honor Rick Wilcox for his dedication and to this country, the service, the military, the army, okay. and also being an um, honorary member of the Mohegan Veterans Organization. We thank you and want to honor you with this medallion. Yep, here we go. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Rick Wilcox. I'm a student of local history. Um, since my retirement, um, I've tried to do a lot of uh, history related to the Stockbridge Muncie community uh, and their time in Stockbridge. I was surprised and very honored that they would take the time to present that medallion to me in the connection with the Mohican Veterans Association, Wisconsin. It's an emotional experience because I have a family connection to the sale of the Indian burying grounds through Dr. Oliver Partridge, who was a relative who, who the uh, tribe sold the Indian burying grounds to in 1809. I see it as a blessing to be able to come back and see it, the historic buildings and be on the grounds where people have been laid from our history and where they have fought. And it wouldn't have been possible without people looking out to preserve and conserve our land so that we can continue to keep coming back. Stockbridge Muncie community continues to place great significance in visiting, teaching, and preserving the tribe's heritage in Stockbridge. And we thank you for joining us. <laughs>